Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to more Thousand Year Door. So, we finished the game last episode. It took a very long time, but we finished it. But of course, that's not all that's left to do. We've still got bonus stuff to take care of, which is what we're going to be doing uh, right now, today, here on the Colorful Artie's channel. So, let's continue with where we left off. Check it out! Post-game cutscene. We sail back to Rogueport. You're a strange one, sir. It must be something special to convince you to return. Although, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. Goombella, it's been a while. Long time no see, Mario! I'm totally glad I got to see you again! This is awesome! Everyone's ready! We heard you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you! So, are you ready to go? Wherever you want to go, we are so there with you! You know, it's funny because... For you guys, this episode will be uploaded like right after the finale, but for me, I had like two whole weeks at least where I did not record any Paper Mario, so it actually has been a while for me since I have uh, been here. Hey, Lumpy! Ah, Mario, how's it going? Hey, guess what? I kept a journal of my hunt for black gold. It's a little embarrassing, but want to read it? Sure. Which part would you like to read? Part one... Oh, I've never, I've never seen this before. Part one, the night before. The night before. I'm finally off tomorrow. I filled my pack with cheese and I'm ready to go. My to-do list is crossed off. I owe so much to all my investors, not just money. The old get-rich-quick dream, but this is different. I have a reason. See, I owe it to my hometown. It's so cold there, people are constantly shivering. If I find oil and send it there, then people can use it to heat their homes. Oil will make me rich and them happy. It seems to be the perfect goal, right? I have always, always had this dream since I was very small. Of course, getting rich is a big part of it too, but who doesn't want money? Money, money! Cover me with it, please! Ugh, well enough for tonight. Heh, <laughs> yeah, that's a little embarrassing. Read another? Yes. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, is this Bazaar from the first game? The Bazaar Fiend. Why did it have to turn out like this? I got to Toad Town by boat, and then I took a train off to the foot of Mount Rugged. Oh my gosh, this is totally Buzzer. Unfortunately, you can only get to from Mount Rugged to Dry Dry Desert on foot. And tragedy waited for me as I slogged fatefully up that winding trail. It was a huge, awful vulture. I've read about it in my travel brochures. This Bazaar accosted all travelers on Mount Rugged. I hightailed it, but Bazaar had me in its sights. I felt a piercing jolt as its claws dug deep into my backpack. After dropping me in onto a cliff, Bazaar seemed to forget me and disappear. I let out a sigh of relief, but when I touched my back, I noticed my pack was gone. My pack? In it was all my food and money to start the operation. No. That mangy Bazaar made off with everything of importance to me. All I have left is this journal, a shovel to dig for oil in my life. But perhaps living is miracle enough. Or so I'd like to believe. But now, I can't turn back. I climb down the mountain to the desert. The dry dry desert sprawls out before me, beckoning dreamers and fools. I am both, and I set out with a heart full of dread. Oh, jeez. Helping hand. A helping hand. I can't do his voice anymore. I'm through my normal ones. I'm now in a place called Dry Dry Outpost. Someone pulled me lifeless and parched from the merciless desert floor. It was a Koopa with a fine mustache named Colorado, an angel in a piff helmet. He was a world-traveling adventure archaeologist. I told him about Bazaar, and my quest for oil, and my dreams of riches and warmth for my people. After I spoke at length, he gave me food and water. I asked him why he should be so kind, and he looked into the distance and said, Turning one's back on an ambitious dreamer invites others to do the same to you, old boy. I just, I just want to believe in every dream this sad old world can muster. This guy, he still chases his own dreams, dusty dreams of archaeology. We stayed up all night discussing each other's dreams. It was great. Aw, that's so nice of Colorado. A reliable guide. I am now at a desert oasis. After Colorado left, I set out from Dry Dry Outpost to find my digging point. But the desert is so wide, it's impossible to find anything without a guide. I had no idea where I was going, and my head was splitting in the heat. My throat was burning and scratchy. Was I awake? Was I asleep? I heard a voice calling to me from far away. 
Hey, are you a nice guy? If you're a nice guy, then give me something nice. I didn't have the food or water I received from Colorado. I had nothing. Why do you lie here? If you are a nice guy, give me a nice thing and I will help. I croaked. All I have is... All I have is my dream. When I next awoke, I was at this oasis. You're awake, I heard. There is a squeak in there and a gray head scarf. My name is Mustafa. You have nothing to give, but I got something nice anyway. I don't know how or why, but it seems I've been saved by yet another stranger. Do you need a guide? If there is somewhere you want to go, I will take you. Unbelievable! I have actually found a reliable guide! Oh my gosh! This is this is like throwback to the original Paper Mario! This is great! The digging point! The digging point! We're here! I'm finally at the spot where I'm supposed to dig for oil. I was told to draw a line from a blue cactus to a cactus-like rock. Oh my gosh, I know these places. I went north to a precise distance from the exact termination point. I ended up here, at a point between Dry Dry Ruins and the Oasis. Mustafa, is it Mustafa? I think it's Mustafa, since it's like a mouse, has guided me to this, uh, this far with skill and bravery. He said, you are a nice guy. Your dream will come true. Mustafa believes this. He left then, leaving me to fight this battle on my own. All I have to do is dig here until I find oil, that's all. I stocked up on lemons and limes at the Oasis, so I should last a few days. I MUST find that oil! The long dig. The long dig. I am digging for oil now, and my hand shakes as I write these, perhaps, final words. I have been digging from sunup to sundown, but still no sign of that sweet crude. Maybe I've just picked a dry spot in this cursed spot, in this cursed desert. But I'm sure this is where Merlovely told me to dig. Yes, I'm sure of it. There's no more food or water, and even my hopes have dwindled to nothing. Ah, this is it. My dream dies here, with me under these unforgiving skies. My dream. My... My... Wait, no, this is not it. My dream is of something else. Yes, something else. Dig. Keep digging. I must keep digging. Arms move, body work, find oil. Just dig. Am I right? The wrap-up. I am now on a boat back to dear Rogueport. I did it! I finally struck oil in that dry desert. I have left the day-to-day -day operation to my men in the field and now return home. It all came true, striking it rich, finding oil, my dream. But somewhere along the way, this became more than just my dream. So many people have helped to make this dream happen, so many. You had nothing to give, but I got something nice anyway, dear Mustafa. I just want to believe in every dream this sad world can muster. Ah, Colorado. People who lent me money and gave me food and showed me the way. So many hands reaching out to help me. I must do something for all of them. That feeling has pushed me even harder. I must share this feeling with the people who helped me as I struggled. I must share these words that have seared themselves into my heart. Dreams come true, Lumpy. Aww. I see. Well, I'll just be here thinking about what to do next time, so say hi anytime. Thanks, Lumpy. I literally never knew that that existed, so that was cool. That's also almost a third of the episode done. Oh, shoot. <laughs> hey, dude. What you got? Nothing. Lame. So just have one recipe. Look in here, we've got... Okay. Hey, I got an email! Who's it from? Gob, Fruit Bomb! Um, is this right? Do I just type or what? Yeah, okay. So, hey, I was so happy that you got me that hand honey candy. My voice came back and everything, but maybe I was just a little too jolly. I started shouting, and I now I lost my voice again. I'm resting now. So, yeah, there may not be much here in Far Outpost, but at least we got snow. Yeah, we have snow bomb fights here. We put tiny bob bombs inside our snowballs so that they explode when they hit. It's super dangerous, which makes it super cool. Unfortunately, it is also makes it super illegal, which is pretty lame. But come visit anyways. Later, gob. Okay, Gob. That's interesting. When the light fades from Rogueport, a hero emerges, inscribing his name in legend. Graffiti Corner. Super Luigi, all five volumes, now on sale at the Toad Bros Bazaar. The Mustachioed Green Baron. Oh, really? It's the final edition. 256 coins? That's highway robbery. Alright, well, this better be good. 
this is the part of the story that Luigi refused to tell us. Super Luigi, Volume 5, Journey's End. At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hate Psalm Tower. Luigi rallied his allies. We would defeat the Chestnut King. We must. Faced by his side, or fre bleh, faced by, friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the fell Chestnut King. But then he heard a voice and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by crepe in a bid for the throne. At that moment, the villainous crepe appeared. The marvelous compass, please, hand it over, and the Luff Empire will rule again. Mwaha! Luigi and company were no match for the f might of crepe, their true enemy. But then, the the compass pieced in eclairs a tiara shone forth. It bestowed the future sight on Luigi. Knowing Crepe's every move, he smote the fiend with his mallet. And that was it. It was all finally over. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace. But Luigi regretted not gazing farther into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty, and who stood at her side. But it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which remained exactly as he had left it, a cold comfort for his heavy heart. Taking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial had sapped his strength, and he soon fell asleep. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair, and sleeping, Luigi spoke, I shall return. The end. Well, that was lame. That was not worth 256 coins. Boo! Rip-off artists, all, every last one of you. I've been catching a breather here, you know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Is there a new one? Yes, yeah, Super Luigi book. Actually, you know what? This guy actually novelized my quest. He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me here at the inn during breaks for my adventure. I didn't think anyone would be interested in reading a book about Luigi. But Super Luigi came out recently and check this out bro, here in Rogueport, it set a new record for consecutive weeks at number one on the bestseller list. Oh ho 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 ho, hooray for Luigi bro. I started reading it the other day, but it's an encyclopedic account in multiple volumes. Excruciating detail bro, it's like a history book. It seemed like one anyway. They've got it in the shop here in Rogueport, how about you snag a copy bro? I was the only one who bought any of it. <laughs> I love how he's like, yes, I did it! Yay for me! And Mario immediately started snoring. Uh, nothing here that I want. Let's check out the trouble requests, shall we? There should be three new trouble requests, I believe. Oh, we also have to speak with Professor Frankly, because he found the real treasure. Hey, frankly. You seem pretty cheery. And as always, I am happily busy with my research. By the by, do you know what was in that treasure chest we found in the palace? It contained... A dried shroom! Oh no! It's nothing to be disappointed by! Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms a thousand years ago! This is a groundbreaking anthropological discovery! Yeah. Man, a lot of disappointment here. Anyhow, let's see the trouble request center. What's up? Got Doty, rouse these cads, bub, help me make up, and then swab, erase that graffiti. Let's start with Doty. I really wanted to see the great tree, but there are many cads in the way. Won't someone please rouse these ne'er-do-wells? <laughs> I am waiting in Boggly Woods near the Great Tree. Ne'er-do-wells. Wow, there's something. There's a phrase you don't hear these days very often. <laughs> hey, you. Ah, now this is a problem. Uh, what's that you say? Ah, uh, you can help me? Excellent, just mar- <laughs> Okay, I can't do this anymore. Excellent, just marvelous. I was just about to give up on the whole deal. I came to the woods just to see the great tree, but the thugs up ahead scared me. Contending with goons is not a part of my repertoire, so to speak, so I've stalled here. Do you suppose you could give all the goons up ahead a proper fashion for me? Well, I'll be waiting here until you do. Thanks in advance, chum. I need to equip first attack again. Holy cow, I deal a lot of damage, though.
All right. I have no need for refund anymore. There you go. Done already, eh? Marvelous! I can finally see the great tree! I'm in your debt, sir. It isn't much, but I hope this will do you for your troubles. It's my change for lunch. Hey, 20 coins! That ain't bad. Perhaps I'll see you up ahead. And we solved the trouble. Cool. Well, that was really easy. Why did they wait until post-end game for that favor? That could have been right after the Boggly Woods, in fact. I just remembered another thing we should do. We should go back to the green mouse on the roof and see if he has any more stories for us. Good day to you, sir. Is there a tale you want to hear? These are the tales I can tell you now. The magical map. For mere five coins. The heroes knew that the seal might not last forever and they sought to make the Crystal Stars available to one who might need them. So before going to their individual dooms, they made a map to all the stars. And to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. And that ties up all the loose ends for the plot. Sweet! Anyhow, let's go back to the Trouble Center, shall we? Let's do Bub. I got in a fight with my mom, and I need you to help me make up with her. I'll be waiting near the Sanctum in Pashley Heights. Um, how could I not take on Bub's trouble? And I just realized, I need to make that last recipe. Give me a cake mix. Yeah, I'm just thinking ahead of time for the pit. Uh, having multiple Quake Hammer badges would be really helpful. The downside to that is that would take 6 or 8 BP to equip all of those, and like 10 FP <laughs> to use a Quake Hammer, which is not very efficient, but it really could come in handy. Okay, hey Zesty, last recipe time. It's cake mix and a jam and jelly. We get jelly candy. Candy made by Zest T replenishes 64 FP. That is a lot of FP. Now, that is actually better in this than it was in the original, because in the original, the only way you could possibly have 64 FP is if you were maxly you had the maximum level of FP and equipped all three FP plus badges. But in this, because your FP caps at several, like I feel over a hundred, that's easier to do. Oh wait, that's the wrong way. I'm going to partially sanctum. Not Twilight Town. Maybe I'll go to Twilight Town a little later in this episode. For Amazy Daisies. Hey, Todia. People ask me if I get tired of walking the same route every day. And I say, no way, Jose, because it's a little bit different every day. Oh, that's right, I've seen her this. And look who it is! You remember them. It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? I've come here with Bootler. Yes, a little vacation to Poshley Sanctum. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was the time to turn some heads on the road. Gwee-ha! <laughs> but what a nice surprise to see you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. It's Bo and Bootler from the original. This is a wonderful Easter egg. Lady Bo, your beauty is like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Indeed, I feel you've grown into a fine young girl who'd make your ancestors proud. All right, I've got it. I've got to get the tattle on these too. That's Bo. Wait a second, Mario. Exactly what is your relationship with her? Tell me now. <laughs> Just kidding. I always wanted to say that, <laughs> but you did go on an adventure with her, right? Tell her. Tell me sometime, okay? <laughs> That's Bootler. He's Bo's butler. But what does a butler do exactly? 
It looks like he only listens to Bo, so I guess he wouldn't answer me if I asked. <laughs> Originally, they were going to put all of the original partners in this game, but they kind of ran out of organic ways to do that, so... Washley Sanctum is a rather famous building, eh? And the painting inside isn't the only gorgeous thing. So is the building. Oh, that's right. I just wanted to hear the, my Canadian accent again, to be perfectly honest. Hey, little bub. I've been waiting for you, mister. See, I got in a fight with my mom, and I want to make it up to her. So I wrote her a letter, and I want to give her a present. But I don't know what to get. I've narrowed it down to three things, so could you help me decide? You, ooh, shroom cake, a keel mango, or a fright mask. And I'll be honest, this it doesn't make a difference which one you pick, really. I'm going to say just a keel mango, because that's the closest one to me. You've got great taste, so I'm sure it'll go over well. You also have to go find it and bring it here. Because, you know, they don't sell those fiends here. I didn't want... I forgot it. Yoshi. Come on, Sid. Away! Let's see if his mom is in Northern Poshley uh, Heights. And why do they call it Poshley Heights anyways? It's on pretty level ground. Hello, you two. Hmm? Bub? Who's that? I don't know, Bub. I have no son at all. Don't speak to me. Wow! Holy cow, that must have been some fight! Whoa! That is harsh. It seems Bub and the missus had a little row, hmm? It's hard when they get to that rebellious age, you know, dear boy. And indeed, Mr. Banks. <laughs> Wow, uh, Mrs. Baba, that is Silver Bob. That is not cool at all. Not cool. <laughs> Come to me, Keel Mango. Normally I would say Shroom Cake, but I don't want to have to buy more cake mix. Hoobonk! Hey, little bub. I'm back. Did you bring a kill mango for my mom? I did indeed. Yahoo! A kill mango! Thanks, mister! I'll just attach this letter, and we're done. But I'm afraid to give it to her. She may still be mad. Yes, yeah, she is. Can you give it to her and come back, please? And we get a present. The thing the Bob, Bob asked you to deliver to Sylvia. Oh, that's right. It's not Silver Bob. It's Sylvia. All right. Well, let's hope this goes well. When Bob was like, maybe I'll give her a fright jar, was he trying to just prank her and scare her? <laughs> Hey, Sylvia. Why, hello, Gonzales. Do you need something? From little bub, you say? Why, there's a letter! Let me just read it. Dear lovely mama, I'm sorry I didn't do my homework. From now on, I'll do my homework and try to be a good bob -om like papa. And I will give you good food and a nice house and a pretty hat. So please don't hate me from bub. Oh, I'm just going to break down and cry here. Oh, how delightful. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Gonzalez, don't mind my tears. They are joyful ones. I just want you to tell Bub something for me. Tell him I'm not angry. I was just being stern because I love him and care about his future. I never meant to hurt his little feelings by it, and I'm sorry I lost sight of that. Gonzalez, please bring my little bub back to me now. You were denying he existed when I talked to you earlier, so forgive me if I don't think that's entirely genuine. It's a shame, because it's a pretty sweet scene besides that. <laughs> Come on, bub. Time to go home. Hey, mister. How was it? Did she like the present? She's not mad anymore? Yahoo! Whew! It's all thanks to you, mister. You're the person I respect most, after my dad. And, as a reward, I'll give you my entire fortune. You don't have to do that. 
Not that I have many coins, though. Free coins. That's worth it. <laughs> he didn't have to do that. Well, my, where to next? All right, last trouble request. Swab. I need someone to go to the 50th floor of the Pit of 100 Trials for me. Shaboom. So I need someone pretty tough. Shaplawi. For details, please see me next to the cannon statue in Far Outpost. Shaboomity. Yep. The last favor, you need to go halfway through the pit. Which I did after the second world. <laughs> It's doable. And at this point in the game, it should be incredibly easy. If time gets to it. Here he is. You agreed to help for, you agreed to help for my trouble, Shaplawi. Thanks to you, Shaboom. There's a dungeon under Rogueport called the Pit of a Hundred Trials. Shakao. I heard if one writes wish on wall in a fifty floor, then wish comes true, Shapop. I used special big explosion to get down to fifty floor and write wish, Shakrak. And then I realized Holfein was hoax, Shadoop. I risked life getting down there for useless graffiti. I wanted to race, Shashoom. I would erase it myself, but I don't think I could get down there again, Shakroom. So could you go to the 50th floor of Pit of Hunter Trails and erase the graffiti, please, Shablu? Yeah, yeah, sure. This better be worth it, though. I've got to go that deep anyways. I'm still not sure how I want to do the Pit of Hundred Trials in terms of a video. If I wanted to, like, stream it or something else, I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna just go to Twi uh, Twilight Trail and level grind on a few Amazing Daisies. I want to get some more BP level ups, mainly. I would like to be able to equip pretty much all my great badges uh, in attempts for the Pit of Hundred Trials. So, let's start by arranging the badges here. So, I'm gonna unequip Power Smash. I'll unequip all of my defense-based badges, I think. And Flower Saver. I'll leave Quick Change on. I will equip Multi-Bounce. What else? I will equip Power Plus, Power Plus. Power Plus P. Oh, I can't equip Power Plus P. I'll equip the Jumpman badge, then. And I guess I'll unequip Quick Change. So I can equip the second power plus P. I will equip also both the P ups, D downs. So at this point, I have incredibly low defense, but I'm ridiculously powerful. Which is exactly what I want. I also kept first attack on, so I can deal with the more annoying enemies very easily. Oh, I, sh I also would like spike shield on. Let's see. I don't need the second power plus P, P I don't think. Let's equip Spike Shield. Oh, that's right, I have a few Super Appeal P badges. Try something. If I unequip the second power plus P badge, and I have nine, so if I if I equip the two flower saver badges, does this mean I can do multi bounce for no FP cost? I hope so. I also want Bobbery. Alright, so I'm not gonna get the first strike on these guys, because I would insta kill them. Alright. Okay, it still costs 1 FP, so you can't make special moves cost more than that. But I'm not so powerful that I can just multi-bounce on these guys and insta kill them. At only one FP cost. Excellent. Well, then in that case, I'm going to unequip that one and call it uh, Flower Saver Peep. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, keep in mind, keep in mind, without any special badges equipped, I'm only supposed to deal three damage per jump, and I'm dealing eight <laughs> damage per jump. That's ridiculous. <laughs> there we go. Ho ho, check that out. There's actually not as many star points as I expected from an Amazing Daisy. I expected like 50. Oh well. Alright, I'm gonna re equip some stuff so I can. or I'm gonna unequip a few badges in order to equip uh, Quick Change again. Let's see. So I need five more BP equipped in order to do that. I'm not going to need Spike Shield anymore. And I don't think I need that badge, so... The only reason I'm equipping a Quick Change badge is so that way uh, I can use the Yoshi to quickly run into the enemies and get off screen and just increase the speed of this happening. But at the same time, if I encounter an Amazy Daisy, I have Quick Change equipped so I can swap to Bobbery and use the Bombast on the same turn. Boom! Give me those star points, please. Of course, we're gonna upgrade BP. Because <laughs> why wouldn't we? Mario became a superstar! Next battle, Mario's crowd and stage get even bigger! I don't think I ever reached superstar rank in this entire game. So basically what you missed there was I spent quite a while in here. I've spent quite a while in the Twilight Trail, basically fighting that middle daisy over and over and over and over again, waiting for the Amazing Daisy to spawn. It happens not too rarely, so it took me maybe a half hour. I killed quite a few of them, got three level ups, I upgraded BP every single one of those times. So now I have a grand total of 48 BP. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I will set my badges later on once we get outside the pit, just to show you what the badge setup I'm going for. One thing I debated doing for the pit setup was grinding in the Pianta Parlor, getting a ton of Super Appeal P badges. And that way, basically, if you get enough of those and equip them all, you can basically just, at the start of the battle, Mario can use Supernova, which is the final star, uh, crystal star power. That pretty much insta-kills all enemies on screen, and then the next battle you can have your partner go first, appeal, and then it fills up all the star power that you just lost. And you can do it again. Rinse and repeat. Of course, that would be boring, so I actually have a better setup than that. Because <laughs> at this point, I realize if I equip both power pluses, both P- or if I equip the two power pluses for Mario, all or nothing, and P, down, uh, P up, D down, and jump man. Every single one of Mario's jumps is going to deal 8 damage. That's a lot. I can't use the hammer in battle with the jump man badge, but if I equip spike shield and ice power, I can jump on anything without fear of getting killed, which is very nice. And basically, if I equip some flower saver badges I can and multi-bounce, Mario can multi-bounce on all the enemies and pretty much insta-kill everybody up until the 50th floor. So that'll get me down real quick. And I have enough BP to do other badge setups as well. Hello, miss. I need FP replenishing items. What do I have in here? Is less dynamite? Yes, please. Also, the... <laughs> the enemies in 
Twilight Trail frequently had boost sheets or life streams with them, so I stole those. So now I have quite a few boost sheets and quite a few life streams on top of all that. Alright, miss. Store my super shroom. I just have a mushroom in here. Well, that's lame. Alright, what else do I have in here? Zest special, zest a lot. Oh, oh my gosh, I have some really good stuff in here. I have some really good stuff in here. I can't possibly take it all. Oh no, what do I do? I really want to show off the zest dynamite. Maybe I have too many life shrooms. I could mix the ultra shroom and some gem and jellies together. That could work. Okay, well, at the very least, I want the Zest Deluxe. And at the very least, I want the Jelly Ultra. Because why the heck would you not want that? Honestly, I feel like the Life Shrooms and Blue Sheets, while well, they're all well and dandy, I don't need that many of them. Maple Super Koopa Bun. Oh, never mind. Oh, those bottom three fiends stink as well. Uh, yes, I would like a couple things. Honey Ultra, yes, please. Uh, what's this, a Jelly Shroom? I would love that. Is that special? <laughs> Courage Meal, because why the heck not? And I guess, no, not the Mushroom. Not the Mushroom. I don't want a Mushroom. That's not going to be helpful at all. I wanted to say a life shroom. There we go. Full inventory. I am loaded with good stuff. Now, before we reach the pit, I need to think about my badge setup. So obviously I want the power pluses and multi-bounce and P up, D down, and all or nothing. Spike shield, ice power, all that jazz. But I gotta think about other stuff that I'm gonna equip. Also, at this point, because I gr uh, because I leveled up three times in Twilight Trail, the enemies down here are probably not going to give me a whole lot of star points. Oh, well, let's check my stats now. Deepest level reached 50. Record power bounce is 6. I found all 100 star pieces. Yee. Okay. So going through here, I'm not going to need power bounce till like, the very end. I won't need the charges right away. Yes, yes, that's all good. Yep, I like that. I will equip another Flower Saver. That'll be useful. Ice Power. I have Spike Shield equipped. Very nice. Uh, oh, I will not be needing First Attack down there, because First Attack won't even work. Hmm. Is there any way that I could deal more damage? Oh, Happy Flower. Well, Happy Flowers really won't help, because most of the battles are going to be over in a turn anyways. And I'll equip the damage dodges, just in case. Alright, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie, and I hope you, t you tune in for the next episode. It'll be the last episode of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. We will be tackling the pit of a hundred trials and finishing this game once and for all. Hope to see you then. Have a great day, and God bless.